Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Hypera Fast Deployment Communication Solutions New Product Launch Event. This is Laura from Overseas Solution Department. Here, let me introduce fast deployment communication solutions in the following 30 minutes. Are you ready? OK, so let's get started. The presentation mainly focuses on four parts. The first part mainly introduces why need us. So what kind of situation faced for our client? The next, mainly introduce what can kind of our solutions provided by us. So what can we do to help our customers? Then next, we'll show the why choose faster deployment solutions. What benefits can bring to our client? The last one is roadmap for those products. OK, so let's move on. As we all know, normally we don't need to worry about the communication issue in the case of public network coverage. For example, in Shenzhen big cities, New York in USA, because the public network is everywhere, we can use WeChat or WhatsApp to communicate with each other, text each other, or video call. But how could we keep communication in those kind of situations? For example, when disaster happens, the fire, the earthquake, the flood, or even main accident. So how could we solve those kind of communication problems? Before we provide solutions, we need to deeply understand what problem faced for our client. Firstly, there may no an internet, no electricity, no roads anymore. The basic infrastructure is not available because of the natural disaster. In the meanwhile, the time is left for the buried person. So the rescuers mainly focus on the rescue work. They need to find the survivors as soon as possible. Moreover, the rescue team and the control center need to communicate with each other immediately to transmit on-site information and seek more support and assistance. So they need to rapidly establish on-site communication command network. OK? So after analyzing of all problems, what kind of communication devices can we provide to the customers? OK. So the key point is always the voice. It can not only help disaster relief works to get support in the first time, but also save himself at a critical moment so that a command center can receive voice message and fully get the situation in time, forced by radio and data services. The second is how to transmit the voice message, video, data, and where. The first device may come to my mind may be the repeater. However, according to the previous analysis, this repeater cannot be connected by using microview or optical fiber because disaster relief workers couldn't take all those cables, accessories, go everywhere to rescue. So the best option is ad hoc repeater without any weird link. And also, the repeater should support large coverage. It can help customers expand the search and rescue area. OK, so when I get to this point, ad hoc repeater, um, some clients are confused about what is ad hoc repeater. OK, so don't worry. I will explain in details later. The last one, OK, is for flexible deployment. Normally, the device is easy to use, portable, work for a long time with independent power supply. It can help our client save lots of time and convenient for them to start to rescue quickly. Moreover, in special cases, for example, such as raining days, we also need to consider about the waterproof and dustproof requirement of the equipment to ensure that the equipment can still work normally under extreme conditions. OK, so after analyzing analyze the requirement of devices, so what kind of specific fast deployment communication solutions can we provide to our customers? OK, so let's move on. OK, so here's the overview of our fast deployment communication solution. It is divided into two parts. For the left part, is a narrow band solution. It is mainly for voice transmission. And then for the red part is for broadband solution. Not only for voice, but also for video transmission. Okay, so let's talk about the left part. 
It includes eCenterPro, ad hoc repeater, and uh, radios. eCenterPro, the function is similar to temporary control center. Install this pilot platform into it. And it assigns the work group, initial group call, get the personal GP for GPS information, and so on. And then, for ad hoc repeater, which is provide a network for multiple radios, the main difference between those repeaters, you can, we can say the EPO 200 and the EPAC 200, uh, is you can install the, for the fixed EPAC 200 on the vehicles, port, port or tower, but for EPAC 200 is a main pack ad hoc repeater, easy to carry and a mobile deployment. Okay, so this is a left part. And then let's talk about the red part. It includes eCenter Pro, man pack mesh 580p, and handset mesh 380p. The function for them are provide a link for terminal to transmit the video. Okay, so here examples, you can use HDMI interface and also use the IPRG45 interface to connect, okay? So let's discuss about the details about the two solutions. Before explaining those two solutions, some customers may not understand what is ad hoc or mesh, the repeater everywhere. Okay, may also ask me a question, why I need ad hoc technology? Here, I would like to make simple description so that everyone has a basic understanding. Okay, so ad hoc repeater, it means the repeater developed based on ad hoc technology. So what is the ad hoc? Mm -hmm. The mobile communication networks we often refer to are generally centralized and operate based on preset network devices. Ad hoc comes from nothing, meaning for this. Then extended for this purpose only, ad hoc network is a special kind of wireless mobile network, the IEE 8 11 standard committee adopted the term ad hoc network to describe this special self-organizing multi-hop mobile communication network. And ad hoc networks were born. So what are the basic characteristics of ad hoc? Okay, so firstly, the status of all nodes in the network is equal and the nodes can join and leave the network at any time. There's no need to set any central control nodes. And then the failure of the, any nodes of the uh, ad hoc will not affect the operation of the internet network. So it will automatically connect to the neighboring nodes. You see here, it will connect to the, the, this one. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, so, it has a strong resistance to this junction. And also, when the mobile speed reaches to 120 km per hour, there's no impact on the network transmission. Therefore, based on above characteristics, that's the reason why I choose ad hoc technology for fast deployment solutions. Okay? And then, what's ad hoc repeater? Okay. EPAC 200 is repeated developed based on ad hoc. So what's the difference between conventional repeater? Here, it's a basic system diagram, okay? Here we can see three teams for team one, team two, team three. How to connect it for the teams? For conventional repeater, you need to use IP link or Mac view for connection. But for those ad hoc repeaters, can be auto connect automatically. Why? Because we use ad hoc technology which can be achieved auto networking. Also, here are some features about uh, those ad hoc repeaters. Mm -hmm. Why they support the two groups calls simultaneously? Yeah, see here. Mm -hmm. And also, um, it also uses any four frequencies. The distance coverage for repeaters the distance can be up to 20 kilometers. And the distance between radios and EPAC 200 up to five kilometers. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so regarding the function, another point I think you need to pay attention when radio is doing the short distance, 
the two radios can be connected with DMO mode, yes, DMO mode. But when the distance becomes longer, OK, here, the two radios can be connected by using EPEG or 200 automatically. The workers, they don't need to do any operation during the whole process. This is very important for the rescue person on site, such as for firefighters. When they are fighting the fire, they are holding the fire, it in gracious with both hands to put out the fire. And they don't need have hand to press the button. Okay? So another thing I want to mention is that EPEG 200 can also support to connect to third party standard DM tier 2 radio. Okay, so this is the uh, character about the EPEC 200. Mm -hmm. After this part, I want to share some typical scenario how to use EPEC and EPO. The first one is for firefighting scenario. Generally speaking, when factory fire occurs, it's far away from the city center and the location remote. So basically, your surrounding public network signal is poor. There's no awake public network. So they need to need use a private network to cover those kind of area. Here, they may choose DMO mode radios for communication. Yes, DMO mode. But when the fair port inside the factory, such as mm, the underground floor, the edge on the line causes the fair. And the wall in the basement and on the ground are too synced for DMO signal for penetrate. So, Ad hoc repeater network recommended for them to use. It can not only provide stable, private network, but also connect signals between different floors or basement and ground. Moreover, according to the rules of the fire protection, the frequency between each group cannot be interfered with and ensure that they can work independently. For example, some, te some teams are responsible for fire integrations. Some is responsible for getting water, and also some respond for signal coverage. This is a big challenge for some regions that are difficult to apply continuous frequency points, compared with our previous first generation product EPEG 100. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of you use that use EPEG 100, okay? But our device EPEG 200 support any four frequency points, perfectly solve the problem. Each group can use EPEG alone, so the, there's no any interference between each group. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next for VIP security. In order to ensure the safety and the reliability of communication, a private communication network will be used. Generally speaking, security accommodation and conference place are not too far away several kilometers away, so the coverage of EPEC is enough for long distance communication. Both sides can be connected in time, mm -hmm. and then when security person are running on road, they need to bring the equipment to the vehicle at any time. And at the same time, in order to ensure the safety of VIP personnel, it will maintain real-time communication between the site and the command center. So EPEC, 200 compact design play a key role, light and convenient. It's easier for them to carry out. Moreover, the final user don't need to, to do any parameter settings, and the radio device can be automatically connected to the EPEC 200, ensure real-time communication. Okay, so next part is for urban flood. When urban flood occurs, each city generally has a corresponding pre writing plan. Firstly, quickly establish a temporary command center near the disaster area to monitor and rescue disaster relief situation at any time. Secondly, since there's no road, no electricity, and no network, the rescue teams need to have a quick command network to communicate with each other. At the same time, when floods occurs, most of the raining so the equipment needs to support operation in reading this. Okay, so here, based on about two points, we proposed an EPEC in the temporary command center. And each team, you can see each team, team one and team two in area one and area two. 
each team carries an impact in disaster relief area. So I to ensure that they can keep communication with the command center at any time. Meanwhile, in order to enlarge the coverage area, we support to place an impact on the roof, which can reduce the signal loss caused by the buildings. The waterproof and dustproof meet IP67. So it supports work in the raining days. What's more, during the rescue process, the working time of the equipment is also very important for disaster relief personnel. Disaster relief is 24 hours uninterrupted. So the longer the working time of the equipment, the better. EPAC 200 supports independent power supply, 10 to 12 hours. So we recommend bringing a spy battery to meet the workload of the whole day. OK, so after this part, the next part, um, this mainly for forestry. For forestry, it's divided into two parts. One is to use EPAC forestry firefighting, and the other one is to use EPO for forest patrol. OK, so let's talk about the forest firefighting first. When there's a fire, firefighting will be quickly dispatched to establish a temporary control center near the fire. Due to rapid fire, in order to prevent the spread as soon as possible, the general ground firefighters will quickly dig out a uh, isolation belt in the nearby area, which can ensure the safety of the firefighters and minimize fire loss. These ground firefighters will be divided into several teams, arrive at uh, different areas. For example, here, the emergency onsite one and the emergency onsite two and the temporary control center. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some for firefighters and some for dig out the isolation bed for those kind of teams. Okay, and also the rescue teams and the onsite control center will always maintain contact with each other to report the situation. So how could they keep communication with each other? In order to quickly establish a combined network, EPAC 200 fits the needs of the customers and enable rapid communication between the field and the temporary command center. The forest area is wide and the jungle is covered. So a large area of coverage is needed. And according to success cases in China, we can fix the EPAC 200 on the UAV, which can extend the coverage. And at the same time, in order to ensure that the city command center can get a real-time situation of the on-site fire simultaneously, we also support satellite link transmission and can report the on-site rescue situation to the leader in real time to get more re rescue support, okay? So next one, uh, next scenario is for forest patrol. For forest patrol members, the workers need to patrol many kilometers of mountain roads every day, patrol some important intersections. For this situation, on one hand, it to prove the illegal logging, on the other hand, to find a potential fair points in time. For those patrol members, the biggest problem is that the forest is far from the city center. There is no network, no optical fiber, difficult to get electricity. What's more, infrastructure is poor. So when found an emergency, if there is no network, it's difficult to report on-site information immediately. So EPO 200 solution can solve the customer current problem. Not only can run as winners large scale transmission of signals, but also EPO's power consumption is only 18 volts, which can save power to the maximum. And at the same time, our equipment has the characteristics of simple operation and convenient upstairs maintenance which can reduce customers' upstairs operation and maintenance cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after this part, uh, this is another typical application scenario of EPO, Coast Guard Patrol. For Coast Guard Patrol, it's divided into Coastline Patrol and Sea Patrol. For Coastline Patrol, generally speaking, the coastline is relatively long, 
In order to prevent illegal acts such as smuggling, the Coast Guard will carry out irregular patrols on fixed lines. At the same time, when the Coast Guard patrol in the sea, it needs to ensure that the sea and the coast members can communicate, communicate normally to ensure that they can get support at any time. To solve the problem of the Coast Guard, we provide EPOS solution to fix the EPO along the coastline. You can see along the coastline. And also, we can provide EPO solution to fix the EPO along the coastline and provide a patrol cast guide with the network to communicate with the command center. Okay, and to ensure effective communication with the shore side coast guard, we support the installation of EPO on board. Mm -hmm. And also, we recommend use the single or omnidirectional antennas to expand the coverage. You see here, the single antenna. Okay. So, after the narrowband voice solution, let's talk about the broadband video solution. The video transmission solution is relatively simple, and the main function is for video collection and transmission. Okay, so here is a basic system diagram. Okay, okay here. This is a basic diagram of video connection and transmission solution. We can see that a PTZ camera connect RG45 interface to mesh, and then it could transmit on-site video to control center in real time. The distance between two sides is up to 15 kilometers in the open space. And also not only support RG45 interface, it also support HDMI interface for video transmission. Okay, so what kind of application scenarios require up video uploading? Okay, so here let me share two examples. Mm -hmm. One typical scenario is for earthquake res rescue. In fact, voice is very important during the rescue process, video as well. After the earthquake, there may be some dangerous, dangerous buildings, ground collapse, landslides, and other potential dangers. For, for these key areas, need to be supervised at all times to prevent people from approach to avoid another dangerous situation. They also support transmission radio to city control center by using satellite if needed. Okay. Okay, let me share another typical scenario. This is for terminal emergency repair. Where dangerous situation happens at any time in the terminal, we can use PNE380 equipment for monitoring because of the narrow space. We can also use PNE580 equipment to monitor at the terminal entrance that may collapse at any time to ensure the safety of works. Okay, so this is another situation for voice solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, after introducing the voice and radio solutions, I think you have a general understanding. So um, maybe another question you ask me, what kind of benefit can bring to our client? How to promote our solutions? Okay, so let's continue here. So firstly, here's the basic solution recommended to our customers. In order to facilitate fast customer transportation and reduce transportation cost, we have made a lot of efforts in the box design, and the main equipment is placed in the box for convenient storage and unpacking. Okay, so here, for narrowband solutions, it includes three pieces of EPI 200 and some radios, can form the simplest link. And for broadband solutions, three pieces of EPI image 580 or PNE 380 plus some, plus some PTZ cameras. And also the ECN Pro is op optional. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another benefit can bring to our customers is, okay, so first for end users, those communication solutions necessary for on-site emerging rescue activities. For example, for police mine, firefighters, rescue teams, 
and also the solution is easier for them to deployment and simple to operate and use. And then for our main competitors, we made a research on market. We found that international Reno manufacturers still don't have those kind of similar solutions. So it means we have a great technical advantage in those kind of solutions. And last one, for our dealer side, because of large market space and great demand, so the profit margins are huge. Mm -hmm. What's more, at the same time, now that the market is still in the guard stage, so we can recommend our technology to more and users, so, that, so, so we can see more and more applications or ad hoc technology in the tenders and technical purpose of customers. Okay, so last one, the after-sales operation and maintenance of the equipment is convenient, and the investment can also be reduced for dealers. Okay, and the next, when I introduce the ad hoc solutions, some of you may also ask me why I choose fixed ad hoc, ad hoc instead of IP connections. How much cost will be reduced? Okay, so here rule comparison about those two solutions. Okay, so here we can say the IP connections, uh, the equipment cost, this one, we can say that it uses the three pieces, HR106 plus Mac view link. And also for that part, ad hoc only use three EPO. The RRP price is much higher than ad hoc. And next one is for installation cost. For our experience, Normally, we install the three pieces HR106 plus microphone link. It uses three days, but for ad hoc, only for two days. And last one for use cost. For IP connection, it complies configuration and the debugging. But for ad hoc, it communicates immediately when power up. Yeah, so that's the reason why we choose ad hoc. Okay? So, finally, the last one is introduce a roadmap. Okay, so here, this is a roadmap. Okay, so first is for first generation, but for the overseas market, we recommend for the second generation. This is a new generation. The EPAC 200, and the EPO 200, and the EMASH, and also the Eastern Pro. But, but how, how to say, the wave frequency, for EPAC and EPO will be released in April next year. And the EMASH and the ECN Pro is ready. Okay? So, uh, thank you very much for your listening. This is the whole presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a message online. We'll repeat your messages. Okay? Okay, so thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay, so everyone will receive some more questions from you guys. Okay, let me check. Okay, uh, one guy asked me the question. You mean a pair of frequency, say for example, 115 and uh, 155 mini hertz, both 12.5 kHz. Yes, definitely, yeah, you're, you're right. And here, uh, would it be possible to share emails for everyone webinar so that we can network to share appearance? Yes, we will definitely, we will share this part later. Okay. Uh, okay, so the question is, what's the difference between EPAC 200 and HR 565? Okay, so for EPAC 200 is developed based on ad hoc. But for HR6 file is a repeater, conventional repeater. Both HR file, 6 file need to connect to use IP link or Mac view. So this is the main difference. But for EPAC 200, no need to do that. Yeah. Okay, please send the presentation by email. Yes, we will send it later. Mm hmm okay. Okay, so. Let me check. So also somebody asked me a question. 
uh, how long it works for mesh. Uh, that one, yeah, for that one, the working time is up to 14 hours, 14 hours. And for EPAC is for 10 to 12 hours, okay? Mm. Uh, can EPO be used to extend our extend, extended coverage? Yes, for EPO, it, it, it depends, it depends. If we install the EPO on the tower, it's higher, maybe 20 to 30 meters, it can extend the coverage, extend the coverage. The maximum for EPO coverage can up to 20 kilometers, to 20 kilometers. Okay. 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 So someone asked a question. I want to have a command center. Uh, what I need. Uh, okay. So command center. Um, you can ask uh, the local salesman. He will give you the 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 price list. Okay. The list. Okay. Is a version of EPAC 200 for VHF band? Okay, for which band will be released next year in April? Okay. And uh, some maybe ask me the price about the, the sample. Uh, about the price, you can connect our local salesman, okay? Uh, okay, someone asked me a question. Is any possible HP7 servers can be used? Yes, definitely. They cannot only support HP7. They can also support the business mode and the industry mode. Okay. Uh, EPAC is a solution for mixed used DMR LTE. No, it's totally separate. Yeah. Mm. Where Motorola and Airbus DMO work with EPAC? Yes, for EPAC 200, it can work with Motorola and Airbus DMO radios. Uh, okay, next question is, is the new EPAC 200 fully compatible with old EPAC 100? Yes, for fourth generation EPAC 100, it can work with the second generation EPAC 200, yes. Okay. Okay, so what's the difference between eMesh 580 and uh, Mesh 380? Okay, for this big one, this is Mesh 580, this is Manpack, Manpack. Oh, sorry, this is EPAC, this is EPAC 200, this one, this one, Manpack, but this is uh, Hand side, hand side. So this is uh, the main difference. And also uh, for the coverage area, for this one, the maximum coverage area is about uh, 15 kilometers. But uh, for this one, only about uh, five kilometers, five kilometers. Okay, so this is almost the, the question from your side. If you had more questions, you can leave your message to our uh, staff. Yeah, we will repay you later. Okay, after the presentation. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye.